Number 32. What is the moment of inertia of an object that rolls without slipping down a two meter high incline starting from rest and has a final velocity of six meters per second? Express the moment of inertia as a multiple of mr squared. M is the mass and r is the radius. All right. Um, so we don't know what object it is. Okay, it could be a sphere, it could be a cylinder, it could be whatever. I chose to show a cylinder, but it really doesn't matter. I'm not even gonna, not even gonna. I could have showed it as just a point. It doesn't really matter what it is. And uh, it told us that the initial velocity of the object is zero. At the end of the slope, the velocity will be six, and that the beginning height is two meters. So this problem kind of piggybacks off of the last question. Okay, um, we need to find the moment of inertia. That's the question, okay? So we're asked to find I. Now I know it says express the moment of inertia in multiples of mr squared. Don't worry about that for now. Just think about we gotta solve for I, okay? Now what's the nature of the of the body that's moving? Well, it tells us that it's, it, it's a certain ball or object, whatever it is, that's going to be rotating down the hill, okay? It's gonna roll without slipping. So we know anytime you hear that, you gotta think two things. Not only will this object have translational kinetic energy or linear kinetic energy, it will also have energy of rotation also in it, okay? Because it's rotating. Now, that being the case, okay, you have to remember that if I take this to be my initial condition, or I'll call this, you know, you know point one, and then the end of the problem, point two, I could call it initial and final, it really doesn't matter. I know that the energy at the beginning will be equal to the energy at the end, okay? So what is the energy at the beginning? Well, it's not moving. Does it have rotational energy? Nope. Does it have translational kinetic energy? Nope. Does it have potential energy? Yep, right? Potential energy due to gravity. So there only is potential energy at the beginning. Now, after the object rolls down the hill and there is no height left, does it have any potential energy due to gravity. No, because there is no height, right? I mean, I can write this all out, but I'd rather just, you know, we gotta start thinking a little faster through the question. So there is no potential energy, but there will be translational kinetic energy because they told us a velocity in meters per second, that's translational motion. And it will also have rotational energy, okay? This concept was, was also discussed in the prior question. So we have kinetic energy, I'll call it linear kinetic energy at point two plus then kinetic energy of rotation. Let's expand on the terms. So now we have mgh is equal to one half mv squared plus one half i, which is the moment of inertia multiplied by omega squared. Okay, so now from here, our job is to solve for i. Okay, that is our job. Now, what might make this a little easier is if we first try to find commonalities between the um, angular velocity and the tangential or the translational um, velocity. So, I'm sorry, I was just thinking about something. Um, so now, in order to, we have a formula for this, and this formula has come up many, 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 many times in this chapter. You gotta know this, that the tangential velocity, which is the same thing as just the linear translational velocity, is equal to r omega, is equal to the radius multiplied by the angular velocity. Now, if I were to take this equation and solve it for omega, we would come up with this result. It would be v over r, okay? And what I realize now is I can take this and substitute that on in for my omega, okay? And that does something nice. You'll see, mv squared plus now one half, uh, this will be i, and this is now v over r, this whole thing squared, okay? What that's going to allow us to do is it's, allow, it's going to allow us to start to combine certain terms. I'm trying to get, remember they didn't tell us the angular velocity. We don't know what it is, and we'd never be able to find it because we don't know what r is. They didn't tell us what the radius of the rotating object is, right? But they did tell us the linear velocity. So that's why I'm thinking, how do I get linear velocity in here? I don't, I, I can never calculate this thing fully, so I got to somehow get rid of it. 
all right, do a substitution. Now, when we do this, all right, let's see if we can come up with uh, some concepts now that are, are uh, or that we can combine certain things, okay? So here, so here we have, uh, what I'm gonna do now is let's look at it uh, from this perspective. Now, I know that there's a common M between these two, okay? There is no M over here, okay? So this purely is now just algebra. This isn't physics. This is just algebra, okay? I have to sum now, I have to somehow solve this thing for I, and not only do I have to solve it for I, but I need to get my answer to have M R squared in it. Okay, that's the goal. So I need to have it look something like this. I need to have it look, my final equation look like I is equal to some number multiplied by M R squared. This is what I need. Okay, so now I'm looking in this and I'm thinking to myself, how in the world can I get M R squared out of this? Okay, that's the goal. Okay. I notice that these two items have mass in common. So if I were to subtract this term on over to the left-hand side, I would then come up with a result that looks like this. MGH minus one-half MV squared is equal to one-half times I multiplied by V squared over R squared. I just distributed basically the square, okay? Now what I realize is that I have M's in common, right? So what I can do is now I can pull out a common M between them. So I would have now M multiplied by GH minus one half, one half V squared. And that will then equal one half multiplied by I multiplied by V squared. Okay, now I could write over R squared here, but that would be the same thing as writing this whole thing over R squared. Okay, it's synonymous. Now here's the key, right? These are basically two fractions. What I can now do is just multiply this whole side by R squared. And if I multiply this whole side by R squared, then I gotta multiply this whole side by R squared. And that's where my MR squared will come from, okay? Another way to do it is just look at it and say, oh, if this is in the denominator, I can just shift this up to the numerator, okay? That's fine too. But that's what I'm going to do. Let me write the result over here. So now this is MR squared multiplied by GH minus one half V squared will be equal to one half I V squared, okay? Now solve this whole thing for just I, okay? Now I didn't have to do this step that I just showed prior. You could do this all at once. I'm doing it for a specific reason for those who might struggle with the algebra, okay? Now you gotta solve this thing for I. So you gotta get rid of all the terms here that are connected to the I. So you would multiply this side by two, it'd have to be the reciprocal of that fraction, and you would also then divide this side by V squared, okay? So essentially then you're multiplying this side by two and dividing it by V squared. So that would now be M, oops, this would now be MR squared times GH minus one half V squared. This whole thing multiplied by two, so I can plug in my two there, divided by V squared. And that is now equal to I. And now you're saying, well, this looks complicated. This looks pretty simple. So where do we go from here? Well, guess what? You know everything, okay? You might say, no, I don't. Well, that, you don't know this. You don't know the MR squared, but that's okay. You're gonna leave this. You're gonna leave this alone. We have to get it in terms of MR squared. You do know G, 9.8. You do know the height, two. And you do know the velocity. Six, that was always the final velocity. I should have written a little two here along the way or my F value, but that's the final value, okay? And that velocity is the same as the final value, all right? So now all we have to do is just plug in the numbers, which is kind of nice. So let me just move this up a little bit and let's get this over with, right? So this is gonna be two M R squared times now 9.8 times two minus one half times six squared, all divided by now six squared. And that's equal to I, and let's see what we get, okay? So 9.8 times two minus 0.5 times six squared. That whole thing you can then multiply by two and then divide it by six squared. So you get zero point, and you probably could have simplified this a little more, but I'm not looking to do that. 0 0.08888888888888 There we go. <laughs> Times mr squared. And that's your answer. All right. 
Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, help us out, hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next question. Take care.